I guess the main story uh, on the week uh, of the weekend was the attack on a Russian theater by four terrorists who uh, basically shot up the place. I mean, the videos are pretty horrific. There were videos making the rounds. I think they were taken down on X, but on, on um, Telegram and other places, literally showing, uh, showing these terrorists, you know, just killing people uh, point blank while yelling Allah Akbar uh, as they were doing this. And, uh, you know, the, the, uh, they killed 137 people. Hundreds others are, uh, are injured. Uh, they threw bombs. Uh, they shot them point blank. They sprayed bullets into the crowd. Uh, just devastating. Just, again, another one of these horrific acts of nihilism done in the name of the great religion of peace, Islam. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, while shouting Allah Akbar and, and all the rest of it. Uh, the uh, four, four uh, people responsible for this have been arrested by the Russian authorities. Uh, they are all from uh, of Tajikistan origin. Tajikistan is in the south east of, uh, of Russia uh, and uh, a place where, you know, there's not too far from Afghanistan, not too far from kind of the, uh, the base of where this particular group of uh, ISIS, which took responsibility for this, uh, is based. ISIS uh, took responsibility for this. We'll talk about ISIS in a moment. Uh, and uh, declared it in a, in a, in a letter uh, or in a, a post online. They also, ISIS then published videos of the attack. So the, the, whatever the, uh, the attackers were wearing cameras and they streamed it to whatever ISIS server and ISIS had access to it and then, um, and then posted it on, um, on various channels. I mean, it, it really is horrific and, and um, uh, disturbing. Uh, again, the kind of just complete and utter disregard for human life, the complete and utter barbarity of it and uh, uh, the, the nihilist, nihilism of it. The, uh, I, I, I saw, you know, the, the Russians posted interrogations of these people. Hard to tell with these kind of things if they're real or not. Uh, the, the one video was real where they literally... The Russians caught one of them, and they literally cut off his ear and fed it to him. He had to eat it. Um, it was, I mean, the video was taken off X after a while, but it was there for a little while. I didn't watch the whole thing. I just believed the description. Uh, after I saw the ear cutting off, I, I didn't watch to see if he actually ate it. But that was what the description said. Uh, so... A number of different angles here that we can uh, that, that we have to discuss here is one is is uh, the effect on Russia and and the way Russia is kind of spinning this. That's certainly one um, aspect of this. Another is ISIS, who they are, where they are, uh, and and what their ambitions are, and and uh, what's next, I guess. Um, yeah, I think those are the two angles we want to attack. So let's start with Russia. Of course, the first instinct that Russia had oh, uh, was, was to, to blame Ukraine and to claim that the Ukrainians were evolved, supposedly, again, according to Russian authorities. And I don't know if I can, we can really trust Russian authorities, but according to them, the, uh, the terrorists were, uh, had a car and they were driving towards the Ukrainian border and were stopped, stopped at a checkpoint heading towards Ukraine. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we can trust that. I don't know if you can believe it. Uh, but that is at least uh, the Russians' argument for why they're claiming Ukraine uh, was involved. No other evidence has been presented for Ukrainian involvement in this. Again, ISIS took credit from this. Uh, Putin uh, did a five-minute, I think, little talk uh, on television about this to the Russian people, didn't mention ISIS, didn't mention Ukraine. So clearly they're trying to spin this. Uh, Putin, on the one hand, this makes him look weak as a president who can't protect his own people. But on the, on the other hand, this could play into his hands in the sense of his uh, uh, willingness, uh, his, 
I don't know, uh, argument to uh, do a much bigger mobilization of the Russian armed forces for battle with Ukraine and to the extent that he can blame the Ukrainians for this and that the Russian people will buy that. To that extent, uh, he is, um, you know, that, that, that helps him and, and uh, uh, with, with, with Russians, with uh, common people in Russia. Russia, I mean, one of the great, uh, one of the tragedies here and one of the indications of kind of Russia's complete corruptness, uh, about two weeks ago, the United States told Russia uh, that they had intelligence suggesting that ISIS or uh, an Islamist group was planning an attack on Moscow and uh, warned the Russians that this was coming. The Russians not only ignored this, but Putin in a public statement about a week ago, a week and a half ago, literally said, this is just the West uh, wanting us to feel afraid. This is just the West fear-mongering. There's nothing to this. Trust me, don't believe what you're hearing from the West. And uh, he looks like an idiot, uh, given that the United States, the intelligence the U.S. had turned out to be incredibly accurate. The United States heavily monitors ISIS, has been at war with ISIS in one way or the other, kind of a soft war, warm war, not a hot war, uh, since, uh, what, the 20 teens, since the Obama administration, and, uh, and, and in, in Iraq and Syria, and is at war with them also in Afghanistan. Uh, this particular attack is uh, the ISIS of Afghanistan, the ISIS group that's in Afghanistan, training on, in Afghanistan, uh, claimed responsibility. Uh, ISIS, and uh, interestingly enough, let's talk about ISIS. So ISIS Afghanistan is at odds with the Taliban. They don't like the Taliban. Uh, and uh, the Taliban are too moderate and too appeasing. ISIS is more radical and more, um, more uh, consistent. And uh, although I don't know how you can be more consistent than the Taliban, but I, I think ISIS... Taliban has mainly uh, uh, devoted themselves to subjugating their own people. They allow terrorists who want to expand Islam to the rest of the world to function there, but uh, they, uh, they leave it uh, as is, right? They leave it at is. But right now, the um, um, ISIS, on the other hand, is dedicated to worldwide jihad, the dedicated uh, to uh, converting the rest of the world uh, to the jihadi cause. And uh, it, so that is what animates them and that's what motivates them. And I think that is the source of their uh, resistance, of their conflict with the Taliban. It's great. I mean, one of the good things about evil people is that they don't get along, that they hate each other and they fight constantly. I, I think in World War II, we had the Nazis and the communists who cut a deal early in the war uh, at the beginning of the war, and then uh, the Nazis reneged on it. Uh, you, 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 and you've got, you've got in the Islamic world, pretty much all the different terrorist organizations, to one extent or another, hate each other and fight each other constantly, which is lucky for us. ISIS, um, ISIS from Afghanistan was responsible for the killing of 13 Americans. Do you remember the frantic evacuation of uh, Kabul, of Kabul in the uh, as, as the United States when was it last year the year before that when the United States um, left Afghanistan, well if you remember there was a, a bomb a suicide bomb a, a series of suicide bombings that killed thirteen marine thirteen I think they were marines uh, during uh, the evacuation. Well, those suicide bombs were not the Taliban; they were ISIS, ISIS uh, Afghanistan. Then a few months ago. There was a massive explosion in Iran uh, during the, uh, a, a commemoration uh, for um, uh, Soleimani, the uh, leader of the Iranian Republican Guard, who had Iranian uh, Revolutionary Guard, who had uh, been killed by the, the Trump administration and killed like 80 people in Iran. And the first instinct the Iranians had, just like the Russians, was to blame Israel and to blame the United States, only it was soon discovered and, and uh, acknowledged that ISIS, 
Afga uh, uh, you know, Afghanistan was responsible. The Iranians then bombed Pakistan and Afghanistan and Syria and Syria, Iraq, uh, or Iraq, uh, as a as a as a response to it, trying to hit ISIS, I guess, based in those three states. And indeed, ISIS is prevalent in Afghanistan. It it has bases in Pakistan, and of course, ISIS was born in Iraq and on the particularly in the Iraqi Syrian border where during the peak of the ISIS so-called caliphate, they actually controlled land, uh, both much of uh, northern uh, Iraq and much of northeast Syria were controlled by, uh, by, the, um, by ISIS. Uh, the Americans and then the Russians um, uh, basically, and, and the Kurds, and uh, basically pushed ISIS back and... Uh, defeated them to the point where ISIS controls no real territory in that part of the world. But they're still there. They're still alive and well. They're still functioning. Uh, and it's one of the reasons or one of the excuses, depending on how you want to think about it, that the United States still has troops in Iran and in Iraq and Syria is because of uh, the, the uh, ISIS is still there and ISIS could regroup um, so that... Um, you know, they, 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 they're still there in order to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, let's see, um, what, else, uh, what else was there? So, yes, ISIS also controls large swaths of land uh, and is very active in um, North Africa. Um, uh, the Sahel, that, that, the region in North Africa between the Sahara Desert and kind of the sub-Saharan Africa, there is a strip of land uh, in the news recently was the fact that Niger, you remember uh, months ago we talked about the Niger coup where uh, the military took over the Niger, Niger, not the Nigerian, the Niger government. And uh, then the Niger government kicked out the French and then about a week ago uh, the Niger government decided to kick out the Americans. The United States has a military base uh, from which they fly drones that they spent $100 million building in Niger, well, they've just been kicked out of that base, and it's dubious whether they can use it. The base, the drones, were all there in order to combat ISIS of North Africa. So uh, ISIS is still around, still prevalent, still interested in killing uh, non-Muslims, and as we can see, has extensive reach into, uh, into Russia. Uh, Tajikistan, there are many Tajikistanis who live in Russia, so there is a fairly open border between Tajikistan and Russia. Uh, Tajikistanis, Tajiks, I guess they called, um, come to Russia to work. I think there are over a million and a half of them in Russia. And uh, so it's relatively easy for uh, terrorists uh, to come across from, the, uh, from Tajikistan. These four, they have said, again, under interrogation, that they were paid $5,000 to do this. So this is interesting. Most ISIS attacks, at least most ISIS attacks in scale outside of the territory they supposedly control, almost all of them are suicide bombings So if you, or, or suicide attacks. ISIS was responsible for many terrorist attacks in Europe during the mid-20-teens. Those were all suicide or mostly suicide or... They knew they would die, even if they didn't commit suicide themselves. They knew somebody would kill them, uh, whether it was the cars ramming into people, knife attacks, uh, or, or just, just gunfire. They all knew they would be killed. Here, it at least appears that they are, uh, that they thought they might be able to get away, right? They had a getaway car, they, they drove off which is a little atypical of ISIS. So that's one consideration to think, well, what, what exactly is going on here? Could it be something else? I, I, it's not something else. It's pretty clear ISIS. It's, it, other than that, it's got their more on it. And again, they've admitted it, and the uh, U.S. warned in advance that it would happen. Um, and what this suggests to us, ISIS has now struck Iran, it struck Russia. Uh, it's not taking sides in the Ukraine war. What it is doing is it's testing out its reach. And the more terrorist, attack, uh, terrorist attacks like this they are, the more prevalent they are, uh, the more widespread they are, the more they make the headlines, 
the more likely it is that ISIS can recruit people in Europe and maybe even the United States to commit terrorist attacks in their name in those regions. So it wouldn't be surprising at all if ISIS attempted uh, some terrorist attacks in Europe. There is a large Muslim population, a tiny fraction of whom are susceptible to ISIS. And again, uh, as soon as ISIS lost territory and lost the momentum and wasn't in the news and, and wasn't being portrayed as winning, terrorism in Europe disappeared. But now they're back. They've attacked Russia. They've attacked Iran. And they could, they could do a lot more damage. They're in the news. They're getting uh, headlines. There is a real possibility of terrorist attacks in Europe and even the United States. So um, I'm sure the intelligence agency is on top of this. It is somewhat reassuring that uh, the American intelligence services knew uh, that something was brewing and warned the Russians. One would hope they would know something is brewing if something was going to hit Europe or something was going to hit the United States, and as a consequence could take it seriously and, and actually stop it. But anyway, tragic, but uh, ominous, ominous in terms of kind of the rebirth of ISIS and, the, uh, and, and uh, their willingness to attack and attack far away from their base. Uh, again, their bases today are Afghanistan, where because of uh, the United States exiting Afghanistan, they are free to uh, uh, train. The Taliban don't like them, but I don't think the Taliban are going to go out of their way in particular to fight them off. Uh, so they train in Afghanistan. They are also in Pakistan and in uh, the, the eastern part of Iran. And uh, Iraq and Syria, they're in, even though they don't control territory, they're there as well. And then maybe the, the place where they control the most territory, where they have the most mobility, is in North Africa. And uh, uh, the, all the U.S., European allies and quote countries that were helping them fight ISIS in North Africa, they have all turned against the U.S. and Europe. And while they haven't exactly sided with ISIS, they're going to be a lot less effective in fighting ISIS without U.S. support and without, um, without European support. So ISIS will only, from this point on, get stronger. And I, I don't know that Russia will do anything, anything uh, to stop them. I, I don't know who they attack, where they attack. Does Russia really want to do something in Afghanistan. It tried that once, didn't go very well for the Russians. I don't think they want to get involved in that. Maybe they'll launch some missiles like the U.S. always did into some random ISIS camp in Afghanistan and leave it at that. I, I just don't think um, uh, Russia is going to do anything of substance here. Um, it has, it did, when, I, when, it was, when, when they were functioning in Syria, they did attack ISIS pretty harshly. Uh, in, in Syria. Maybe, maybe the Russians in Africa, maybe they would attack ISIS in Africa. Hard to tell what the Russian response will be.